suburb of the Philippine capital. And Qatar will be the visitors in the second game of this competition window. No, you are not seeing... Uh, your eyes are not deceiving you. This, this game, for reasons that everybody's aware of, will be played in front of no crowd after the instance uh, in the Australia game. But it still has a lot resting on it. Here's the schedule for the Group F games in this window. The last game now to round it all off here in the Philippines as Qatar, who lost on the first day of the competition window at home to Australia. The Philippines lost to Iran. And you can see how important this game is for the, for the Philippines in terms of qualification. They sit currently in fourth. A win would put them level with Japan. And they have the head-to-head -head on the Japanese. That would move them back into third place. A loss would leave Japan in the automatic qualification place. And the Philippines trying to ensure they are one of the best, they are the best fourth place team. qualifier group F matchup between the visitors from Qatar against the Philippines let's meet the roster for Qatar well the Qatar roster one, Hassan Mohammed will be the first number one two, out Tala Gay. number five Mustafa Lashin number eight Tangi Nogumbo number ten Yusuf Mohammed number 21 Raslan Al Abdullah Number 22, Khalid Abdi. Number 25, Khaled Abdel Basset. Number 33, Emir Muikic. Number 42, Nasser Al Rayas. Number 44, Paris Abdi. And number 96, Yahya Abdel Halim. Head coach for Qatar is Tim Lewis. Well, you saw Qatar, if they have any aspirations to qualify for the next stage, need a win here. Now, this is normally one of the most difficult places to get the win. Number five, Dave Norwood. Number six, Johnny Thompson. Number seven, Poi Elam. Number 10, Ian Sangalan. Number 11, Stanley Pringle. Number 13, Marshall Lassiter. Number 25, Javit Aguilar. Number 30, Bo Belga. Number 35, Matthew Wright. And number 88, Asi Tolava. Head coach for the Philippines is Yang Yao. Well, there's the rosters, there's the intro. Obviously, the huge changes in the Philippine roster from the game in Iran. We'll cover those after the national anthems. And this is the national anthem of Qatar.
Please remain standing for the national anthem of the Philippines. And now the national anthem of the Philippines. Well, the players will exchange those mementos at halfway. And here's the third team on the floor. The three officials on tonight's game, Nuajim and Shuwali and Jones. They will take the responsibility for tonight's game. And our game director from the Philippines, Bernie Atienza. Well, here is that Qatar roster, same roster that uh, came up a long way short against Australia in the opening game of this second round. Only Tangai Ngombo got into double figures at 14 against the really talented Australian lineup. Here's the starting lineup. Khalid Suleiman Abdi was... Uh, Effective, it's to say he really did try to give this team some leadership. Didn't quite come good for him on that uh, on that occasion. Now the Philippines is uh, a completely different story with uh, four guys who didn't kit up in the loss to be ran in a game where they played very, very well given their resources being really stretched. But they make a massive change in that Christian Stan Hingringer, who had 30 in that game, doesn't kid up this evening. Stanley Pringle steps in, the 31-year-old point guard. And it's always a difficult situation, and a gym that's empty, especially with a team such as the Philippines that really does play on the emotion. The 45-year-old uh, Polislav Tulava on the inside He's going to have to uh, really go to work to help uh, Ian Paul Sangalang to ensure that uh, the Philippines don't get into one of those games that uh, with no atmosphere in the gym, they might get dragged into a game. They've got to really be professional and impose themselves on this Qatar lineup because as we saw with the league table in this group, they're in a tight fight with Japan for third place. If you go across to the other group, um, it's unlikely at this stage. Now, obviously, there's a lot of games to be played, but it's unlikely that the fourth place team would come from this group. Jordan, in particular, uh, and Korea have better records. They currently sit third and fourth with only two losses at the moment. So they are in a much, much better position. Tim Lewis, the head coach for Qatar, has had spent time in the G League in the States as well as coaching in the United Kingdom. Was part of the UK national team staff that went to the 2012 Olympic Games.
from a result perspective, it's a must-win game. Absolute must-win game for this Qatar lineup. Head coach, well, stand-in head coach, uh, Jose Guay. So the Philippines just trying to get through there. The situation they're in without doing too much damage to their World Cup aspirations. Qatar have to come out positively, really have to try and create the situation for themselves. They cannot just uh, show up and play. The Philippines have too much in terms of... Uh, Opportunity in transition in particular. But if they come out here and put in a, a positive performance on the floor without the crowd, with all the background to the game, Qatar could get the win, and that keeps al alive their hopes. Well, the phrase veteran is uh, obviously can be used for Tulava, and he's going to jump it up. Well, all the Massive destructions in the Philippines. It's a chance to maybe get a little bit of respite for ensuring that they deal with that horrendous situation they have with the typhoon in the north of the country. We've had a lot of rain down here in this part as well. But now they can focus on something else for it, an hour and a half. There's just blocked. Chance to run for the Philippines. Numbers down the floor. Nice pass. Easy two on the end of the break. That's how to execute. And shang -Lang gets down the floor for two. And the Philippines have come out and done what they should have done. Really been aggressive at the defensive end, trying to make this game too quick for Qatar. So Qatar have to spend some time with the basketball. They've got to finish plays like that. Tango and Gumbo. I don't think he thought there was anyone coming to block that. Ying Sangalang at the far end just ran the break beautifully. Nice out of bounds. Opens the account for Qatar. Great first step. If a two is good. Stanley Pringle just explodes to the to the hoop. First step just was a different level. And transition again. You can see where the, the scenario is for the Philippines. Get it and run. Norwood picks up two on the break. Four fast break points for the Philippines. That's going to be a foul as you saw the reach. Superman Abdi looked after the ball well enough. Now they have a size advantage. They've got to take it to the ring strong. They get the drop. Abdel Bassett. It's either got to be on the penetration where they can just work their way to the ring like they did then. Well, they can look to try and go on the pass because they do have some size that they can use. But Bassett completes the three-point play. But the issue is going to be there for Qatar. That issue is containing Australia in transition. Pringle weaves his way to the hoop, comes up with nothing. And this is where Qatar are going to have to spend some time with the basketball. Well, they try and post up. And Gombo, the passing angle just wasn't correct. Made a real tough, got a real tough ass to the passer. Thompson to the baseline. 
and Scotty Thompson gets it to drop. We have a lot of guys who can fill it up. Chance on the break, numbers down the floor here. Well, they went for the pretty as opposed to the efficient and end up turning it over. And Suleiman down the far end gets the two. Suleiman Kali drops it. And Qatar close it to one. The three is away. Short defensive rebound. And Gobo has a... Could have a big night here tonight. The three is gone, in, and again it's set. The ball's moved beautifully. Now Alejos gets the two. Oh, the three from the corner is no good. And Gomez does a great job keeping it alive. And Qatar, you can see the way they can play this. They have a means. Well, in transition, Tenge Ungumbo picked up where he left off. 14 points. Game day seven. Knocks down the three. Thompson tries to turn the corner, the ball movement, without really threatening the hoop. Three is long. Well, Qatar could start to believe here. Alayas spins, needs to just be a little smarter. There's no space to make the move. He's got to move it on. Wide open for three. And while they keep firing it up, Qatar will keep sagging off. 13 to eight lead for Qatar. Oh, wow, when it's going your way, it's going your way, way downtown. Everybody's not coming to the party as Mohammed gets the two. Youssef Mohammed knocks down the three from deep. Three from three for Qatar. 0 for three for the Philippines. Thompson will move it down. They're going to have to get this away. They just about beat the buzzer. And Qatar just continue to contain. Good start for them. Halfway through the first, and they lead it 16 to 8. Oh, nice slip. Mohammed goes off the glass and one. Well, you can see a hard show. Lava was uh, early because the ball wasn't even on the floor. Every pitcher tells a story. That's exactly what coach thinks of it. We're going under. Okay, we're just going under. No more two tires. Wala na trap. Ilalim na lang tayo sa ball screen. Okay? You have to stay connected to the bigs. They will shoot the three. They already got us with two threes. Okay? So make sure you're challenging the three-point shot of the bigs. Once it gets swung, remember, we don't always, right now, those have been good options for us. But remember, sometimes it's not going to happen. Pass and follow, pick and roll, dri dribble handoff. Remember, then, this big is flashing. Now we got that three-man game. Then this guy's rolling and spacing. Well, Coach Lewis keen to keep pushing this, sharing the ball. 
keep moving the ball, try and create the easier option. They've got some options at the moment. Philippines will make that adjustment. And then he's going to look to keep the ball moving. The issue they had against Australia was the ball got stuck. The Australians' pressure just wore them down. Mohamed on the free throw line with 4.36 to go in one. And there's the three-point play. 11-point lead for Qatar on the road. Great start for them. Well, ah, they fouled the shooter. One of those cardinal sins. Mohammed picks up the personal. And he's going to send Listat to the free throw line. See if Mohammed, so late, comes across. Just have to accept. You're late. Put a hand up if you can. Do not send them to the line like that. Poor foul. Marcio Lassita. Uh, three San Miguel Beermen in this roster. Two for three. Gets it into single digits. Well, they're going to fire it up early. Whoa! Mohamed just well we said the other night we didn't think he'd seen a shot he didn't like no rebounders just hand in the face just drilled the three when it's going your way make hay as they say when the sun shines and that's all he's doing right now skips to the lane battle on the glass and Qatar come down with it see if Mohamed gets it into the half court will take the ball screen. Bow lifts. They go inside. Oh, the help came and it just got dark all of a sudden. No shot there. Point talking to the official. You got to get back. Wide open in the corner. That's what happens when you don't get back. And as much as Mohammed felt he was hard done by in the block, his lack of defensive transition gives Lassiter to the open three. And the Philippines get a little momentum going. Qatar take the timeout. Hey, listen. Listen, you gotta get fouls here, they're not gonna call it. Don't dwell on it. We gotta get back. Alright? And then we gotta make sure we find in transition. Some people like Lassada, okay, we gotta find those guys early. Alright? Shooters. Alright? Make sure we get out to the three-point line. Listen, we want to get to the second side. Let's come off it. Okay, um, uh, Tag, you've got the ball right now. Is it closer to the side so we can turn? That's how we got the shot open at the corner. Okay? We're always running. Okay, guys, okay? Yeah. Post trailer lang tayo. Okay, come on, let's go. We're always running. Put some pressure on the ball, guys. Let's go. Uh, that's the key for the Philippines. If they keep running for 40, you know, will Qatar be able to run with them for 40? There's the three. There's only two Qatar offensive players just arriving in transition. And here's the example that Coach Lewis referred to in the timeout that you've got a good listen to. No one getting back. No one picking up the shooter in transition. And the Philippines can knock it down for fun. They're going to struggle to get it over. They just about do it. That's a good recognition by El Reyes. Ngoa puts it on the floor. Blocking foul. Tangai and Gombos. Gives them a little bit more stability at the point. More inclined to move the ball. He has it now. Action away from the ball, get a staggered screen, there's a hold. Can't put the palm of your hand on the offensive or defensive player. Palm of the hand is just an easy call for the official. 
There's nothing in the coaching manual that says puts the palm of your hands on the player you're guarding or the player you're trying to go past. So the Philippines in the penalty. And Asif Mohammed knocks down the first. No need to panic. Eleven point game it isn't. Ten point game it is, but Philippines can score in a hurry. That's not their issue. Their issue is at the other end. Oh, indecision. And Gombo goes inside, uses his physicality. And just abused Matthew Wright. Had so much strength as Wright picked him up in transition. Pulled down a stand and will check in. And Gomo's on the free throw line. Again, that, that physical advantage they have at the three spot. Something they're trying to trying to use, and so far I've been very successful at it. It's been a huge first quarter for Qatar. Qatar have a 24-point quarter. There's still three minutes to go. And again, they can't make both. Well, step back three, running nothing else. That's... It really is living and dying by the three-point shot at the moment. Great effort on the glass, though. My Aguilar, one of those athletes that can really make things happen for the Philippines. Well, they get through. They do a really nice job at guarding that. Daliston flips it out. Right on the dribble, goes with a floater, hits nothing. Defensive rebound is pulled in by Mohamed. Chance to run for Qatar, but somehow finds its way to Khalid Abdi. Suleiman Khalid Abdi puts it on the foul line, steps through. Second move, doesn't get the drop. Nice move, though. Right has it in transition. The one thing the Philippines can't do is stop running in transition. That was poor for them. Right, off the dribble, gets his feet set, fires the three, is off. And Katara dominant on the glass. Last two minutes of the first. Another easy post entry. Abdi gets it going baseline, makes the tough one with the right hand, it's good. Just flipped it up. And a 13-point first quarter lead for Qatar. This could have a huge impact on the group. Open on the back cut. They turn it down, and they're going to throw it away. And they look like a team that's made four changes. They look like a team that's had to bring in people. And what Qatar have to do is remain efficient. They don't need to be coming down and firing it up when they don't need to. They need to be efficient, and then they're going to make the most of this poor start by the Philippines. Qatar already lead it by 13. Again, that physicality in that forward spot. They get more again out of it. Iran picks up the personal foul. And then Gombo just went to work. He's athletic enough to get it on the floor. And once he built, has anything like a first step, just has too much strength for whoever's guarded him so far. But the free throw line is not their friend at the moment. It's the third free throw they've missed. And then he goes 0-4 from the line. Oh, they attack the closeout, stop and pop for two. 
And Bo Belga straight off the bench, the big man. The guy who sets the biggest screen on the floor just stroked it for two. Nice touch. Oh, tough three. Transition again for the Philippines. They missed the three again. And the ball belongs to Qatar. Last 30 seconds of the first. Qatar will want to finish and keep the momentum going. Ngombo again attacks the defender, gets deep. This time he just goes up a little weakly. The Philippines will hold for the final shot. Shot clock turned off. Got to find the open man, right for three, is off. Defensive rebound is LS. And they end the first quarter with a very healthy 26 to 15 lead. And Qatar have come out, have done a nice job, much more control, better options than their game against Australia. The Philippines have run and gun and come up and the environment blanks for most of that first period. Well, those highlights just... Just highlight what a great performance that was in the first quarter by Qatar. The, the transition defense was good, much better than the other night. There weren't many wide open looks for the, uh, for the Philippines, but they've got to stay with it. Alaeus. It was effective. Much better sharing of the ball. Elias again looks to pass. Asif Mohammed, nowhere to go. Elias got to put it up. Off the glass is fouled. And defensive discipline just broke down completely. He wasn't sure where he was. It was going to be a tough shot. He still decided to take it. Philippines into the half court. Still handoff. It's tough. Leaning two. It's off the dribble. Everything is tough for the Philippines at the moment. Not looking to share it. Not looking to spread the defense. Get things in any sort of rhythm. Jumbo, what a move. Oh! 
reverse layup with some spin on it. Straight back at you the other way and they'll count that. And Iran ran the floor really well. Here's the move. Nice action for the replay. Goes under the basket, gets a little contact, and just finishes the play. Gombo doing a really nice job for his team, for his country. They lead 12. Iram's on the free throw line. Good response, though, from the Philippines. They really do have to run it. It's... You know, I don't think they have a way of doing this any other way. There's the foul. Well, they come up empty. Offensive rebound. And Goma just stood and watched it. Doesn't watch it this time. And the command from the bench, which is the other... In fact, the gym's empty. You can hear everything here. They want to spend some time with it. Mohammed. everyone gets a piece of it though. He hits the deck trying to hang on. They're gonna get a jump ball. Ball belongs to the Philippines. Inside, outside. They're still going to try and spread the floor. Wow. Where's that been for the rest of the game so far? Ram just gets the finish. Little pick and roll action. Kali for the three. Again, it's off. It's in rhythm. It's off an inside penetration. And Qatar. Week to week development, that's what it's about. Get better for the next game. Keep yourself alive. A run of his foul. Does. And Gobbo was late coming across, and Dallaston picks up the contact, makes his way to the free throw line. There's the replay. That's the first time that anyone's taken it strong to the hoop. Then makes the two, gets it back to a 13 point game, eight to go in the half. And Qatar, you can see, spreading the floor, trying to just create space for that. Arras goes up and one. Everybody guards everybody on the perimeter. One, two dribbles, you can get to the ring. You've got to be able to contain that dribble. Alas has had a really nice first half. Great footwork to spin. Goes to the open side, gets contact, finishes the play. Makes the free throw on the three-point play. Again, Dunnestown with a three is off. He just lays back on it. It's not even a three out of anything. They're just standing on the three-point line and firing it up. It really is live and die by it. Got to try and penetrate, get something to happen on the inside and then kick it out. Like that, Al Leas, feet set for three is short. And a chance again for the Philippines to run, but now only one person's ahead of the ball. So if you're going to run, you've got to stay with it. Right, moves it on. Again, nothing away from the basketball for the Philippines at all. It's all about the man with the ball. Penetrate, kicks, right, penetrates into traffic. Draws contact and will go to the line. Alayas is not happy with the call, but uh, strong move by Wright. Got rewarded. 
goes to the free throw line. Be right on the free throw line. Makes the second one, gets the Philippines to 20. They still trail 15. It's not about the steal for the Philippines. It's about pressure. They have to stay consistent with their pressure throughout every possession. Ngombo steps through, goes inside. Mohammed with a quick hand. Nice finish. Qatar have a 17-point lead over the Philippines. <laughs> Offensive rebound and put back is good. Oh. Belga gets the two, wants the push too. To underline this, FIBA rankings 30, Philippines 61 for Qatar. And Qatar have a purpose here. And technical foul call. And the free throw is good. And possession. 16-point lead. Could become 19 on this possession. 6.27 to go. Philippines have to work their way back in. Possession by possession. Suleiman Abdi. Got screens either way. Stets his feet for the three. Short. And they look long. Got to protect the ring. Which they managed to do. Attacks it again off the glass for two. That's It's got to be that way. Got to push it. And Kavanaugh gets the two. It's his first two points of the game. Again, activity and pressure. Easy two on the break. Timeout for Qatar. Stanley Pringle with a two, but it's a much, much improved defensive effort that's generated that. Get it back to a 12-point game. Nasser, you're still in. Nasser will be at the other elbow, and uh, Mi, uh, Mizo, you're going to be on this side of the floor, okay? Halid and Halid, okay? Here's what's going to happen. Dribble handoff. Tangy's going to screen it. You're coming off it. And Tangy, as you sit in that screen now, you're going to dive. So we have to go top, okay? They're making that piece. We have to go top. One moon at Ayo. Hey, hi, Shadow. Hey, hi, Important now for the Philippines after the Qatar timeout to really knuckle down defensively, get pressure here. Do not allow Qatar to move it too easy. And Gombo goes inside, just barrels his way again. It's that physical presence from the three and the forward spots. They still have no answer to that. Pringle 
is fouled as he puts it on the floor. That'll be the fourth team foul for Qatar. Put, that, put them in the penalty. Here it is again, the strong penetration just barrels his way. And no one comes to help. Firstly, they allow the middle, which is not great, but no one looks to help. So he gets deep and then has an easy look. Philippines in. Nice bounce pass. Pringle Fee in the corner is off. Chased down by Qatar. They have numbers. He goes up, blows it, and comes up empty. Philippines run the other way. Need numbers down the floor, and no one gets there. They skip it. Nasitab will consider his options. The three is gone. He's short. Gumbo comes down with a rebound. Alayas thinks about pushing it, then thinks, nope, not my game. Or Abdel Bassett, rather, thinks not my game. Alayas wants it in the block, doesn't get it. Gumbo lines up the three, is off. Alayas going, to, sorry, Ali Bassett going to work on the glass. Ngombo again knocks it down, didn't need a second invitation. They gave him a sire from the same spot and they played him soft. In playing him soft, they just gave him the three. He goes into double digits, putting together a nice series of games. Eram outside will move it on. Pringle has it, shows a little handle. Inside, outside kick, a ball fake, great decision. That's a super decision by Belga. Prince thanks him for the pass, I hope. And Belga just played heads up. Take the easy two. Last four minutes of the half. Good signs for the Philippines, but they still trail by 15. Oh, soft. Watch out. Belga gets blocked. He stays with it, though. Goes strong. It's fouled. And Berger knows what he is and knows what he isn't. He was always going to struggle in the foot race going down the floor. But you've got to credit him staying with the play. Big five points for Belga off the bench. It's not just his points. He's been a really heady. Nice pass to Pringle last time down. This will make it a 13-point game. <laughs> limited minutes at limited times. He's going to have to step out. It's going to be replaced by uh, Sangalang. Great contribution. Got to be at this end for the Philippines. When they step it up defensively, they make Qatar play a lot quicker. And that's when Qatar struggle. Take the bad option. And that will stay here with uh, 9.2 on the possession. have to put this up goes on the dribble in the lane draws contact doesn't get the drop well the biggest difference one of the biggest difference from this Qatar performance compared to the performance against Australia against Australia that would have just been a three-point shot that had just settled for the three with Suleiman Khalid Abdi was not content with that and he misses the throw.
Mike's the second. Quick release on the three is long, and they just have no rhythm going at all from the three-point line. Three-point stats are going to be a horror show at the half. In fact, they're a horror show right now. And the travel court. Philippines shooting 7% from the three-point line. They'll still keep taking it. And you're not going to change them in terms of taking it, but maybe it should be off of penetration, off a of screen, something in rhythm. Because at the moment, they're just taking it in turns to miss. Shooting 50% plus. Now, admittedly, Qatar are just having a hot day. It's just making it worse. They're shooting 54% from the three-point line. Knocks. It's his turn. He knocks it down. The only difference being that was a little bit more under control. A little bit more in the rhythm. 12-point game. Almost a turnover. Got to recover. That matchup again. There you see the double team inside, outside. And Abdel Halim can't get it to drop. Who's coming up with that? Everybody's on the floor and the Philippines have a chance to run. Four on three break. Just got to finish the play now. Find the open man. There's the open man for the easy two. And momentum going back with the Philippines now. But it's got to be at the defensive end. Qatar looking like they're sucking air. First time they get back. Halim is fouled as he trundled in the trout spot. Can't connect on the second. Pringle penetrates. Again, someone's got their feet set. So much difference off the pass. The momentum starts to swing to the Philippines with 1.30 to go in the half. Ngombo. A lot of time on the dribble, not going anywhere at the moment. Kicks it. Not sure what that was. We'll call it a shot. Ball comes off the Philippines with 4.1 seconds on the shot clock. And Gumbo looked like it was a, a struggling penetration in the last one. Lacked that direction. Lashin is going to sit. Poor penetration in the last possession. 4.1, need to get a shot away. Gonna have to fire up the quick one. Oh my word, the bank is open. Omar Gay just didn't call bank because with no one in the gym, you'd have heard him. So we won't, we won't say he meant this. But the bank was well and truly open for Qatar. And that sums up Philippines' first half. Gay moves on. Nice look to the inside. And Mohamed was open. They just couldn't get the ball to him. 12-point game. Qatar are going to knock 50 points down on the Philippines in a half of basketball. That is not in the script. Suleiman with the tough one. Gets the really friendly roll. That's the bank and the roll going the Qatar way to bring up the 50 points. Pringle on the dribble. Mishandles. Open man puts it on the floor. Inside, outside. Pringle feet set for three. Whistle on the play. End line possession for the Philippines. In fact, it won't. It'll be shots. 
foul away from the ball. Here's the friendly roll. Just about got 10 feet and half an inch. Sangalang with the responsibility of the free throws. Makes the second. You're going to try and use as much of this shot clock as they possibly can. There's around a four or five second differential between game and possession. And Gombo looks inside. Not an option. Has to. There he goes there. Nice weight. Little head fake just throws the defense. Four seconds. Philippines got to get it away. Foul line. They go float out for two is good. And Qatar have put together probably one of their best half of basketball in the World Cup so far. Lead this 52 to 39 at the half. The empty seats. The looks of concern on these Philippine players face as they wait to leave the floor here's the game stats 61 percent on the inside for the philippines 55 the number is 54 percent for qatar from the three-point range under seven percent for the philippines they're not shy should we say about shooting the three ball That is an astonishing half of basketball by Qatar. They took better shots than they took the other day. Yep, we're talking about a different level of opponent, obviously. Australia being a top 10 team in the world. But defensively, they challenged the shot enough. And most of the time, they got back in transition. A tremendous half for Qatar. They have given themselves a chance here to get the win on the road that will keep alive qualification chances in the unlikeliest of venues. The Philippines need to regroup in the locker room, try and generate their own in energy, and get right back in the game. So we'll leave you with these highlights at the half that just tell you how good Qatar have been. We'll see you in around 10 minutes for the second half.
facing na lang. Okay. So, every time we run face, all the two bigs are on top. Depends on natin sa pick and roll nila. Well, welcome back. Just moments away from the start of the second half. So, Halid, you're just going to empty it to and uh, enter it to Papis. Papis, get open like C action. Got it? So, here's, here's what's going to go. Then you're going to go screen. Tangy, you're going to tight curl and wipe out. Your guy's going to be on the low side and you're going to wipe out Halid. Halid, as soon as that happens, you're just popping right here. Okay. Read it. You may be wide open on a jump, catch and shoot. Pat, look at him. Also, look at this. Now, on this back side here, I want you pinning down to occupy that defender. Okay? So just turn a real tight curl. Wipe him out. Well, you've all seen. Unusually, look, you know, given the chance to look at the board, you've all seen what's supposed to happen on this first possession. And I think it will tell you a lot about where the mentality is of this Qatar lineup if they execute it in the way that Coach Lewis wants them to do. From a Qatar perspective, they were almost perfect from there in the way that they played the game. Well, the entries happened. Well, there's it. There it is. As drawn up, they don't get the drop, and the Philippines are off to the races. Well, there's the space for the three and just knocks it down. And you can't underestimate again the impact of Belga, the way he set the screen, created the space, the shot in rhythm. That's much more uh, productive than just coming down off the dribble and trying to fire it up. Ngombo needs a pass, finds one. Kuman Khalid is... Short doesn't get the drop. Defensive rebound chance for the Philippines to run. Nice start. They come out. Great work on the glass. Do they get the drop? No, they don't. Do they get the offensive board? Yes, they do. Great effort. Inside drops it in there. Drops it back. Well, it's all a bit messy. And finally, Qatar come down with it. Oh, there's the blocking foul as he tried to work on the closeout. So much, uh, so much more intensity or purpose in transition. Nice find in the corner. They turn it down. Well, there's more touches per player in this first half than they had in the whole in the second half. This first quarter part of the second half, they did in the whole first half. Get a chance to get this into single digits. Gumbo picks up his second foul. Well, the other thing it did that first half, it just shows you how much they're missing the impact that uh, Christian Stan Hardinger had in that game in Iran. Had the 30 points and not in uniform today. It's uh, a strange one. But when they get these opportunities to get back into the game, got to take them they can't be missing free throws they make the second it's now into single digits see Mohammed steps in he replaces uh, Abdul Basset and the Philippines up the floor that's all you have to do make him work put pressure try and wear the the opposite the opponent down Gilas trying to work their way back in here. 
Hamid spins inside and they fortunately get it picked up. Tough finish. Elias has had a game here. We're only early in the third quarter and he's already on to 11. Well, they slip the post, go back inside, an easy two. And for the first time, Qatar look at each other with their palms up. They've got to stay positive with each other. They've put themselves in a real winning situation. Ngombo again tries to work that strength from the forward spot. Takes the tough turn around, no good. Much better defensive stance. Aguilar just put his body on the line. Three in transition is way off. But they chase down the rebound. And they turn it over, though. Mohamed is blocked. Went up weak with the left hand. And Iram just threw it out of bounds. Nine-point game. Pin that one. Mohamed has it ripped away, tries to recover, should be an easy two. And Bo Belga just trundles in for the lap. Eight points personal, they've been huge. Mohamed goes up in the lane, that short defensive rebound is slapped in, ball's given up. The Philippines really on a run right now until they passed it to the non-existent crowd member. Well, there's more of a contented look on Coach Guar's face, but uh, he's still not out the woods yet. Abdi. Suleiman Khalid Abdi will get the handoff. They take the ball screen, gets a little hesitation in the lane, doesn't get the two, but draws the contact. And Bo Belga's uh, perplexed to say the least. Can't start trying to hang on here, Qatar. They were good in the first half. They have to reproduce that. It's not about protecting the lead. They have to play here. Abdi doesn't get the drop on the second one. In rhythm, in transition, is off. He's still not convinced. Bo Belga. Oh, pretty move. Pretty move. If there's anyone who has turned this around for the Philippines, it's this man. Straight, goes through. Artistic finish, let's just call it that. Every team needs someone to give them the spark. Every team needs the character that Belga is showing. This will make it a four point game. Don't forget it was 18 at one point in the first half. Belg is going to have to sit down. They should be carrying him off, getting him ready to get back as soon as they can. Or well, anyone that has anything to do with that Philippines uh, bench was up to congratulate him. Three on one. And they've come up empty. No point looking at the official. You've got to get back. Abdi penetrates on the closeout. The three for Mohammed is long. That's the shot they were making in the first half. That's the shot they're going to continue to make if they're going to get the win here. Too much traffic. But there's so much more urgency now by the Philippines. Defensively, they've got everything involved. Line it up from the three-point line. 
Thank you. La comes down with it. The three is away in the corner. That's no good. Another offensive rebound. Drop it inside. And the two is good. Jabev Aguilar gets the two. And we have a two-point game halfway through the third. Mohammed is fouled as he goes to the work in the block. Around picks himself up off the floor. Well, this facility's been the home of some of the great events here in the Philippines. I'm bigger than the thriller, thriller in Manila. The Ali Fraser showdown. Well, this might not be Philippines Qatar in the same league, but uh, if Qatar can just restore some of the quality they had in the first, this could go all the way. Mohammed's got to stop the bleeding and make the throws. Makes the first. Referee wants to talk about something. Too much arranging of the where they're going for dinner after the game. Two from two from the line. Aguilar will inbound. And that stops the the bleeding momentarily for Qatar. They lead it by four. Aguilar wide open, lines it up. Way off though. Ball's hunted down. Inside, outside, extra pass to the corner. It's the side of the backboard, that one. If that's the way, if that's really, you're going to play that way, that's fine. But you have to see, the, the, the better shooters need to take more shots. It's the only way to look at it. Turnover, chance to run. Oh, they don't turn it over, that's the main thing. And they can't get the three. Aguilar's on the glass. He doesn't get it. And Gombo, he comes up with the rebound as uh, Guy gets it over the half. Fills the double team. It's all a bit scrappy. The ball will stay with. Qatar, Gabe Nord bringing his experience. The Reynos Shine guy. Well, there's much more intensity and effort at the defensive end, and it really is beginning to pay dividends. They are wearing down this Qatar lineup. No depth on that lineup. It's not a travel, it's a missed shot, though. Pringle in the lane. Ball goes out of bounds. He gets a little bowed out, really. Turnover. Ngombo trundles down the floor. I think he may have twisted as he landed, unless it's just a sheer fatigue. Wide open. Juliava picks up the three, and this is worrying. Ngombo picks himself up up the floor very gingerly. three-point game Qatar trying to retain what they have if that's all they're doing though it's gonna be a recipe for just getting the loss they've got to be the aggressor Elias will move it back to Mohammed at the top great defensive effort throw it long should be easy and that's an unsportsmanlike foul unnecessary pointless Abdel Bassett it's just given the Philippines a chance to take the lead. Just on the back of the foul. It's a, it's a breakaway layup. Take the medicine. The medicine is they're going to score. Unless you're going to make a genuine attempt to block this. That is an unsportsmanlike foul. Everybody stay. 
Well, this is the man that started it all off. Oberliga. Very artistic finish to before he left the floor. There he is in real time. 11 points, four rebounds. He might need a few more minutes to recover, but uh, they're going to need him. And he's going to want to deliver. Aguilar with the unsportsmanlike foul makes the first. They're still only shooting 12% from the three point line. This is the huge thing. All of a sudden, they're starting to offensively rebound. They have 13 offensive rebounds, which means they're getting more attempts. One point game now. After training by 18, the Philippines could lead it on this possession with three to go in the third. You are on the pull-up jump shot is good. And if there was the thousands that are normally in this arena, they would be going crazy right now. From six from 18 down to one up. 20 to 6 in this quarter. Mohammed puts it on the floor, trundles down the middle. He's fouled on the penetration. Mohammed decides to fire the three is long well from downtown Dallaston is long don't know what decided that was a good shot Mohammed again needs a pass finds a pass and Gombo needs one goes inside to Mohammed well they created so much space and the, the lid is on that basket at that end. Pringle. In traffic, kicks it. Thaliston gets it back to Pringle on the baseline. Goes in traffic, goes for the two. And it's a three-point margin for the Philippines. Make that 22 to four. Great work to, oh, throw that one down. El Reyes makes a statement. He still believes they have this winning within them. Alistair pulls up for two. Playing name of Paul Lee, pulls up with the two. Mohammed, I see Mohammed on the inside, followed by Youssef Mohammed. Well, all of a sudden, Qatar are not going away. Skip to the lane. Alistair again for three. Way short. And it's these effort plays now. Qatar is just they're just gonna get worn out. Well, they hit nothing but the backboard chance for Qatar to retake the lead they go long on the pass knocked away and that's got to be an unsportsmanlike foul Alias from behind hugged him
That is as unsportsmanlike as you can probably get. And now Rao still wants to talk about it. He's on the free throw line. Three-point game with the ball. Qatar, Qatar have just got to summon some energy from somewhere. It's not the smartest thing you've ever seen on the floor, Mustafa Latin. And they're in the penalty. Wanting to impress is one thing. They've just given up the unsportsmanlike now. Well, he's back to the free throw line can make this a five-point lead just on the back of free throws. There you have it, 67 to 62. Just takes it strong to the front of the ring. Trying to hold for the last shot. This is around a four second differential. Well, three second differential. Well, a little stumble. That's not going to help. Four on the possession. Pringle has to try and manufacture one. And Alaas just bats it out. And that'll do it for the end of three. A 28 to 12 quarter has meant the Philippines have completed a monumental comeback. Having trailed early by 18, they now lead by three, 67 to 64. Well, uh, if you want to find out the stats on this game, which are not pretty, if you are a Philippine three-point shooter, or anything about any of the World Cup games, the stories, the news, particular teams, download the app by your normal means. If you want to go on the website, it's the FIBA WC website, all the action from all the qualifiers. The other thing you can find out, obviously, is when these games are being played, get along to a game. See your national team play. A lot of, this is obviously a, a game being played in front of an empty arena for disciplinary reasons. But so many sold-out venues, so many great games. The opportunity to see your best players from your country's national team in the flesh. Get out and watch a game. Check the schedule of the next competition window in November. The 
games we've had in this competition window have been absolutely phenomenal in every region. There's NASA LAS, 15 points. Trying to do everything he can to keep his team in with a chance of winning this. Start of the fourth quarter. Philippines now a different scenario with the three-point lead. And that's exactly what Qatar need. Energy at the start of the fourth. Defensive transition and energy full stop and they've got a chance here because the Philippines still struggling to make anything go from the perimeter. And there's the turnover. Everyone disappeared. Mohamed advances the basketball. Work on the offensive guard, Kali Suman going up. Can't get it to drop, gets a new 14 though, backs it out. Arras. Mohamed gets the ball screen, gets his feet set for the long three. That actually manages to clear the backboard. Well, the speed and intensity the Philippines have really put on in this second half has begun to wear down Qatar. They line up yet another three. They still can't get it to drop. Great work by Pringle, who manufactures the putback and keeps the scoreboard ticking over. Five-point margin for the Philippines. Oof. Just a touch telegraph. Three on one break. Just find the open man. Aguilar gets the tip. This is where the Philippines need to be relentless. So now for the first time on the night, just brings it down and fires up his own option. Great work by Aguilar on the glass, just stayed active. One on four he was, but no one from Qatar went after it. Well, this is the Qatar we saw against uh, Australia when it got tough, a little bit slowed up. No one cuts. Tough finish. Mohammed gets the two. Need a lot more of that. They can get the same shots that they made in the first half of the game. Had 52 at the half, don't forget. No good for Pringle. Pringle's had a nice game. They really need him to close this game out now, though. Ten points, six boards, three assists. Make that 11 points. He's going to sit. Guy moves it on. 
Domos takes the screen, lines up the three. Was never in rhythm, looked tired when he caught it, looked tired when he released it, looked tired as it left his hand. Very tired looking shot. And as poor in many ways by Philippine standards that as they have been, they have been relentless with their work rate and effort. And that's what's really given Qatar the problems right now. In the lane, easy two. Don't get the drop, but in all those parts of the game where it's just effort, Aguilar in particular is just winning the battle. Turnover. It goes from bad to worst. Guy gets it into the half court. And they've just, everything's now six feet further out than it was. Mohammed's going to finish that and one, exactly what they needed. We're talking about this as though like the game is gone. It's still, when he makes the extra one, it's going to be a five point game. There's still over six to go. It's just how much energy do they actually have to try and close this out? Well, they finally come down with defensive rebound. That's going to be a blocking foul on uh, Pauline. <laughs> Pringles back. Lee's going to sit. Just need to re-establish what they had in the first half. There's much more ball movement. Mohammed out top, moves it on. And Gombo off two passes is long. The biggest thing they have is they just can't make the three at the moment. Pringle. Qatar now to just re-establish their defensive effort to try and force the Philippines to take the bad three and they need to get well Abdi's now added to the woes by picking up a technical foul not what this uh, not what they needed they're down five this will give Let's give the Philippines the opportunity to score and then score again. And then have the ball. And Abdi picks up a second technical foul, which means he has to leave the game. Un un just unexcusable stuff here. It's a five-point game. One of your better players cannot do that. However disappointed or frustrated he is, he cannot put himself and then his team in this position.
It's a technical foul, so it'll just be a one-shot foul in this instance. But as importantly, a chance to make this a double-digit lead entirely from the free-throw line. They shot the unsportsmanlike in the possession where they then fouled and went back to the line, so that was four. They've just gone three from the line at seven, and they lead by nine. And that's just ill-disciplined by Qatar. Offensive foul, that's a bowl out foul, it looks like. There's no way Aram should have got involved there. Picks up his fifth and will leave. Gumbo moves it on. Just got to re-establish some energy right now. Mohammed has it in the block. Where's it going to come from? Takes the fadeaway jump shot. That's not going to do it for him. Still five minutes to go. Nine point game. Well, somehow it goes back to Philippines. Well, at one point, we thought we might be having the thriller in Manila. But uh, the way the Philippines have controlled this second half, it's going to take an almighty effort from Qatar. Offensive foul as Aguilar illegally screened. Still there for Qatar, but I'm not... How are they prepared to let's knuckle down and do this? Are they prepared to share it? Are they prepared to work at the defensive end? Mohammed drops it inside. Alias, who's had his best game. A great effort. No, no prizes for knowing who came up with the effort. Bo Belga just coming into your picture. Gula settles for the jump shot. Strokes it off the glass. Bank is open. 11 point game. And the home team can begin, they think, to relax. But Qatar still have the weapons. They can get back in this. Time out. Qatar. Pay attention, real simple. Next time, we're going to run. We're going to be going to call two up. Okay, here it is. That piece is going to be on this side of the floor. The guard is here. Okay, Nasa, you're here. Mizo, stay opposite side of the floor. Okay. Fake as though you're going to go up. Uh, Farris, Tangy, you got the ball right here. Tangy's got the ball. Farris, Baker's show, you're gonna go up. Cross screen for Papis. Okay, Papis, you're coming over on a poster. Nasser, now you got Farris coming out. Turn around and get him if he comes. Okay, Tangy, you've got that or you've got this. If that happens, come up and hard. Well, some intensity and some urgency from Coach Lewis. And that's what his team need. The same thing. They need some urgency. They need some intensity. You cannot underestimate the impact that uh, Bo Belga's had today. When this team was struggling, when the Philippines was really struggling, he came in and provided something. It didn't really matter what it was, but he provided something that this team then hung on to and found a way to build into the game. Turnover. And they blow in Aguilar's on the putback. 13 point game. And now it could get messy for Qatar. And first half, that's a penetration and a kick. That's a penetration that Mohammed would have got. 
from the pass from Ngombo to actually try and knock down the shot. Here's the replay of Aguilar's put back. Good athlete. Cannot buy a hoop. Nice lead pass, easy to. Now all of a sudden, it's a 15-point game. That's a 33-point turnaround. And it's going to get worse. Belga moves it on. Mid-range jump shot is good. And again, it's all off Belga. Belga's off balance, didn't really have a shot. I'm going to make a pass that, uh, in this instance, it's very easy for Matthew Wright just to catch in rhythm and knock down the shot. Well, it's all smiles now at the half. And during that first half, it was anything but smiles for the Philippines. Third foul for Matthew Wright. And Gombo's on the free throw line. Well, the lack of depth is obviously a factor. The conditioning is something that they can do something about. 19-5 now. That's a 47 to 18 second half at the moment. Total dominance. Sorry, yeah, 47. Yeah, 47 to 18. Complete dominance by the Philippines. Disappointing the way Qatar have gone away from what was working in that first half. If they were missing shots, doing the same thing, you could almost understand it. But uh, they've gone back to the one guy on the dribble. Alas has had a really solid game for them, though. Not really sure what the uh, delay is about. Perhaps the officials are on uh, looking for a little bit of overtime. And I don't mean necessarily the game going on overtime. <clears throat> Just sinking the possession time with the game time. Back cut. Easy. Oh, there's a little mishandle. Would have been an easy two without the mishandle. That's the sort of three the Philippines were taking in the first half and couldn't get it to drop. Mohammed on the turnaround for two. Well, I think uh, Qatar are going to take a timeout.
have to pressure the ball here. All right, you got to pressure the ball. But we're going 43. Barris, you're at the top on it. On the, on the, well, it may be a little too late, late a little bit too little too late Nassau, for Qatar. Okay? Any dead ball, any dead ball, any made basket. 43. Remember, you're shading it, shading it back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. No showing off. Just play serious. Well, it's a very relaxed huddle now. Second chance points favor the Philippines as well. That's one of those just effort stats. But uh, Twenty-two, five, and six. Yeah, that's a shift. That's numbers he can be proud of. He really has worked hard today. Well, they beat the press. He's played thirty of the thirty-eight minutes as well. Really has put it out there. And that's when you can't have some of your teammates being ejected for the technical fouls. That's when it really hurts you. Pringle penetrates. You're not going to get it away. So a 24 violation. That'll be the full team turnover for the Philippines. Difficult. No one can underestimate how difficult it's been for the Philippines. Okay, all of their own making. But uh, they look like they're going to get through this window. With, out with their qualification status not too badly affected if they can hang on to get the win here. And now the clock has been set to 10. Now we're going to have to reset it again. Here it goes. go long but in the lane is fouled he's going to go to the free throw line Maybe they haven't plugged it in. We had that problem at a venue in the earlier game in this competition window. We're now resetting the clock again. It's just a frustration. It's a good job. There's not 16,000 people in the facility. They would not be happy. At, well, they would be happy at this point because their team is up. But they'll be looking. They would be looking to get to the party. Well, the players are going to leave the floor. Referee's timeout. Just trying to finally get the clock sorted. So we still have a delay here. Aguilar has 16 points. Aguilar has eight rebounds. He's had a really one of the more experienced at the highest level players on this uh, Philippine team. Just 
just need to make that next breakthrough step and a major championship. They've always been one of those teams that gets a win, has a great re result, then doesn't follow it up or doesn't have the resources to follow it up. Fourteen points on the night, nine rebounds to go with fourteen points against the Australians on Thursday. Well, it's all a little bit too, little too late. The three is gone, is off. They still can't buy a three. Ball's fumbled, recovered, and the, and Qatar will have it. They think about the three lineup. Go to the inside, Mohammed, and one. That's where they were in the first half. Sharing the ball, movement away from the ball was so much better, and then they end up with a high percentage shot. Nice pass. Extra is good. Back to a 12, 10 point game. 140 to go. Stranger things have happened. But Belga's on the floor, so you've got to think there's a little bit of stability. In the lane, Flodar is good. Alas. Little flare. Oh, they take the tough one. And Alaeus goes to work on the glass. Still only 10. That have had this effort three or four minutes ago. You never know where this might have been because it was just a one point game for a while. Wide open, extra pass, line up the shot, turn it down, move it on. They can't turn it down this one. They're going to run out of time. Shoot it from the corner for three. Defensive rebound, another positive stat. I'm not sure of the purpose of the foul with 14 seconds. If you're going to foul, you have to foul a little bit earlier than that. Al Rouse has had a nice game for Qatar. Worked hard. Been very honest in how he's played the game. Rewarded with some good numbers. goes up and one well, that gets it a single digits a three possession game 26 seconds to go well, there is a quick foul. They did happen to miss these two. There is enough time. The 
they are relying on misses or steals. Pretty much means it's uh, I can't, it was tough with nine. Now it's ten, makes it four possessions. Eleven. Gonna have to get it and shoot it. And blocked out of bounds. Mohammed nowhere to go. Alias takes the tough one. That's not gonna hit anything. And that'll do it. That'll do it. The Philippines trailed by as many as 18. With a second half performance where they have scored 53 to 29 and they have just restored the natural the order. For me, there's the guy that was really a big part of turning it around, Bo Belger. Qatar were better for large chunks that game than they were against Australia. But uh, the Philippines have got through this window, losing one and winning one. Their qualification position is still very positive. There's the stats. Philippines shot 9% from the three-point line and still win by 11 and still have 92 points. 54 rebounds on the game. So cuts up. Lose this one, 92-81. It was a promising first half, but that'll give them something to build on. That's the other thing about this World Cup. You're challenging yourself against the best teams in com competition on a regular basis. Therefore, you can have some impact. So... Aguilar and Norwood, two of the more veteran players on this Philippines team, have been part of getting it done. But for a while, Qatar really did have them worried. 18 point lead. And you thought. If Qatar can just be good for the rest of the game, they have a chance. But they dried up completely in that third quarter, only scoring 12 points, giving up 28. They only scored 17 in the fourth, giving up 25. That's 53, which uh, outdid their 52 from the first half. It's obviously... That and Mohammed had a really nice game, really put in a shift. And then Qatar lost all their discipline because there are still only like uh, two, three points down. And then the technical fouls and the ejections. Suleiman Khalid Abdi was uh, ejected for two really meaningless technical fouls. It wasn't as if there was anything that uh, warranted it, maybe his frustration. But that really did seal the deal because without the, they're not very deep anyway. So without one of their better players, they began to re, they had no answer to the onslaught at the end of the game by the Philippines. So the game with no crowd is over. From the smart Aranetta Coliseum here in Manila. The venue for the thriller in Manila. Well, it wasn't a thriller, but it was an effective result for the Philippines. That keeps them in a good position for qualification for the World Cup in a year's time. They've still got work to do. They've still got issues to overcome, but that would have been a huge dent for their qualifications if they, would, if they didn't pull that one around. So a great result for them. Well, Belgium in shot was absolutely phenomenal. Exactly what the Philippines needed. It's 
always a pleasure covering the Philippines. It's always a pleasure because of the passion that they play the game with. Well, they'll move on to the next competition window. Still in good shape. Qatar, while well, qualification might mathematically be possible, but uh, it's going to be a very, very tough ask. So for now, always a privilege. We will see you soon for more World Cup action. But for now, it's goodbye from Manila with the look at the table that sees Australia on seven on one, but the Philippines back into an automatic qualification spot. And that's good news for them. So with that table, we'll leave you for now and uh, wish you a good evening and goodbye from Manila.